How's it going guys? It is me, the Dogmatic, and welcome to my draft analysis for the PPL Season 2. Um, I'm going to try and make this a fairly shortish video because I'm really not very well at the moment, um, but I'm recording this the day before it needs to be uploaded. Um, because I'm organised like that and totally only have a few hours a week where I have time to do this, so um, that's on me, but um, I'm doing this the day before uh, it has to be uploaded, so I won't keep it too long. Um, mainly for my own sanity because you can probably hear I'm really congested right now and I've got a splitting headache so uh, yeah apologies if this isn't the best the most informative draft analysis ever um, but as you may have seen or may not have seen uh, my coach interview went up on the PPL channel um, so everyone will now pretty much know I'm back in the PPL but if you didn't know I'm back in the PPL um, back home full time I did obviously have a cameo in the um, Bolt Division last season where I covered um, Padel and the Glasgow Gliscors for two weeks and won both those games so um, looking good so far but I got invited back to PPL the, the main division season two which is really cool um, so here I am with my draft um, I'm going to grab my phone quick because it's got all my nicknames for ones on it so um to give you guys some background behind the draft while I quickly find my notes on my phone um, is 18 teams in the main season uh, this time around I can't remember how much there was the time before I think it's the top 10 go through to playoffs so as long as you go sort of positive or average you probably will make playoffs um, I was number 17 uh, in the draft order so I was uh, just before the wheel pick um, which sadly meant I wasn't realistically going to get any of the new Pokemon uh, or any of the pretty busted Pokemon um, for draft league so that was a bit of a shame but as I haven't done draft league in so long um, a lot of the mons I had never used in draft before so they were kind of new to me so like anything from gen 8 pretty much um, or like the DLCs and stuff like that was, was new to me um, sorry my cat's just come and distracted me um, so there's quite a few things that I was I was quite interested in using uh, obviously a lot of the things that were brand new so this draft happened I think it was two days after the DLC came out DLC 2 um, so literally every Pokemon that was in Scarlet and Violet was considered on the, on the draft board at this point even Terrapagos has been allowed. Um, sadly, that was taken before I could get to it as well. Um, a few of the things, obviously, like Gouging Fire was literally the first pick of the uh, the draft. I think everyone's really interested to see how well that will do, because I think on paper that thing looks terrifying. Um, especially under the sun, given it's a fire type and it has protosynthesis. So that's going to be something to look out for. Um, I'm trying to think what else went uh, quite early on. Dark Cry has been allowed, so that was gone quite early on. Dragapult was obviously gone quite early on. Lots of just broken ones um, that are absolutely terrifying. And I think most of my experience in draft is uh, like your Gen 7, which was probably a lot more stally than games are now because there's so much brute like force and power in draft these days. Um, or in the game, I think you can kind of see that they remove Toxic from a lot of ones. They've lowered the PP of recovery moves. I think they're trying to make it a lot more fast paced than these two so that's kind of like a big adjustment I had to focus on there because Gen 7 when I did draft I like to go for like a really well rounded team that has a lot of bulk and a lot of offence as well but actually given the speed of the game now do you want to go full on offence is there much point obviously hazards are huge at the moment there's a lot less uh, removal than there used to be so do you want to focus on hazard stacking each week that kind of stuff so there's all these things going through my mind considering I haven't drafted in about 3 or 4 years um, I didn't really know where I was going, basically, uh, in this draft. And um, by the time it got to me, I had actually kind of spoken to a few people in uh, sort of like my friendship circle or also in the draft to kind of help me pick what I should go with first. So I've nattered on for long enough, for four and a half minutes, without actually talking about my draft. So we'll, we'll do that now. So um, my very first pick... So I did mention obviously I was 17 out of 18, so I knew I was going to get a wheel, or I was a semi-wheel pick. Um, so there was a good chance that once it got to me, whatever was left on the board, I would be able to get two of them. Unless the person on the wheel pick, which was Necro Stevo, um, 
was somehow able to snipe me round two. That would have been absolutely terrifying, but if you don't have a draft plan, you can't get sniped, which was my approach to this. Um, so my round one pick was actually Urshifu Single Strike. Um, it wasn't something I'd really considered to pick uh, on the draft, but speaking to Jack Gravy, as some of you may know him, the current sort of, you know, he's actually runs the PPL at the moment, um, suggested is absolutely broken in draft format. I had no idea it was absolutely dry, like busted. Um, but then when you kind of look at the Wicked Blow calcs that I've been calcing for like my first few weeks of games, yeah, this thing's pretty fun. Um, and it does have like base, I think it's 130 attack. I've got some teams here, so I can always refer back to these. But the newer ones, I'm not too familiar with their like stats and stuff. Yeah, 130 attack, 100 defense, 97 speed, 100 HP, so it's quite bulky as well. But yeah, Wicked Blow, you know, 75 power, move, stab, that always critical hits, so you just essentially ignore all stat boosts on your opponent's defense. <coughs> it's really cool. Obviously it has got like Sucker Punch for priority, it's got stab close combat, fighting is an incredibly good typing, uh, it does get U-turn for momentum. I was so upset to find out this thing didn't get knockoff. If this thing got knockoff, it would be hilariously dumb, uh, but it doesn't get it, which is a shame. But it's a really nice mon to kind of build around because, yes, it's quad weak to fairy, but and what else is it weak to? Uh, fighting. I think that's it. I've probably missed something off there. Oh, and flying, of course. Um, so while it is four times weak, it does get coverage, like Iron Head, Poison Jab, um, for those fairies. But it then allows me to build a team which can kind of destroy fairies, which then stops you know, yeah, it stops people wanting to bring fairies, or it means I have a really good time against them, which means that Shifu is then pretty good to go uh, for the end game. So, it was a first round pick, uh, Shifu uh, Rapid, no, not Rapid Strike, Single Strike, Rapid Strike's the water one. Um, and there was kind of a Pokemon that was still around for round two, which Jack suggested with this, and it is a new one, and it's something that I actually really liked before I even got back into draft. And I thought it was it, it's based on a mod that I love. Um, so yeah, I've got my round one Urshifu. I've then gone for something which complements it really well in the Iron Moth. Now, this is my first, well actually it's not my, it's my second draft in Gen 9. I was in a showdown league a few months back now. Um, Moth goes crazy in the videos I've seen as well. Um, these Paradox Pokemon are nuts, obviously with booster energy, uh, spoilers, I don't really have like a, an electric terrain core set or anything like that, well, I have a set but not a core or anything like that, so booster energy on like a late game sweeper uh, Iron Moth is something to consider and be really scared of, but obviously it's a huge check to fairies, um, fire and poison obviously both resisting fairy, and extremely strong sludge waves uh, to sort of KO the fairies that are a real problem to um, a Shifu. Uh, poison obviously also helps me um, resist the fighting types, which also scare the uh, Shifu. Um, and in return, what is Moth weak to? Ground. Yeah, a Shifu doesn't necessarily have any super effective moves, but it hits so hard. And obviously, I've got many more spaces left to kind of fix that in the draft. Um, they just complement each other so well. Um, the only real issue there is a strong flying type. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, Ashifu is immune to Psychic because of star typing, so that's one thing that's covered there with Volcarona. Not Volcarona, sorry, Iron Moth. Um, they just work really well. It gives me a Toxic Spike option, it has crazy coverage. Just imagine if this thing got Quiver Dance, it would be incredibly busted. Really sad they didn't. At least it got Fiery Dance, that's something. But you know, it gets great coverage moves, it gets like Energy Ball, Psychic, Discharge, which is great for the Power Chance in its own. Um, and also if there's electric terrain, that's going to be boosted as well. Uh, there's just lots of good coverage moves. It even gets uh, Morning Sun, I believe, so it does have recovery if I wanted to bring like a, a bulky set, because it's deceptively bulky on the special side. I think it gets 110 uh, special defense, so we've got a relatively fast core here as well, 97 and 110. I know there's lots of things that do outspeed both of those mons, but that, for an offensive core, that's pretty good going. They're both good speeds to obviously run either... Um, booster energy on Moth, or like a Scarf on a Shifu if I'm not running protective pads, which is something that's often done for a, on, a, on a Shifu. Um, what I did forget to mention was, at the start, which was one of the best things about this draft, was I got my fiancé to nickname my team for me, 
she has no clue about Pokemon whatsoever, so she just went in complete. I literally showed her pictures and said, it's called this, what nickname should we give it? So, uh, Shifu is going to be known as Macho Man this season, and Iron Moth, incredibly, is going to be known as Moffy this season. Um, so, yeah, that sets the standards, but I will say that there is one nickname which I have stuck with my, from myself from the past, and also one that I was incredibly proud of her for. So, um, yeah, we've got Macho Man and Moffy so far. So I've got two really strong offensive mons here. Um, given how weak uh, Shifu is to Fairy, and also obviously we have the ground issue for um, Old Corona as well as the poison, uh, it seemed a good time to go for a Steel type. And in this case, the Steel type I went for was Corviknight. Now, Corviknight is—it's not a one-trick pony, but it's mostly a one-trick. I can't speak. One-trick pony. Um, it's probably the best defogger, I would say, and people have said to me it's probably the best defogger in the format. Since there was a huge cleanse of defog as a move, uh, and you know, rapid spin is quite a rare move anyway. Uh, where it's not rare, it's it's common on like lower tier Pokemon, which are harder to fit into a draft because they're just terrible. So uh, it's really good uh, for that. It has reliable cut recovery, obviously it has great defences and its typings means it has uh, a lot of like resistances. Steel's just a good typing. Obviously it's immune to poison, it's immune to uh, ground, which is great for the Volcarona, it resists psychic, which is good for the Volcarona, and it obviously resists fairy, which is great for the Ashifu, so it just seems to fit the core really well. Um, obviously both my first two picks are grounded Pokemon, um, and Moth is weak to rocks, so I felt like getting some good removal was important because the way I've seen drafts go in Gen 9, hazards are a huge issue and I don't really want to run boots on half my team every week because then that can severely hamper like the raw output of like a choice specs or a life orb set or something, so that was Call of Night. Then I got my kind of semi-wheel pick uh, again, and I don't think this Pokemon was ever going to get sniped. But it's a Pokemon I've used a lot in the past, and it's also a Pokemon which I think complements Corviknight incredibly well, as well as the Volcarona. And my round four pick, and I can I can see all your eyebrows raise already, is Gastrodon. Oh, I forgot to say, Corviknight's nickname is Spiky. That was what my fiance wanted to call it, so that's what we're calling it. Uh, yeah, my round four pick was Gastrodon. Now, the reason I went for Gastrodon round four, uh, I needed some hazards outside of Toxic Spikes. Gastrodon now gets Stealth Rocks and Spikes, which is fantastic. Um, it complements Corviknight really well. Corviknight is obviously weak to um, Electric and Fire, both of which Gastrodon is either immune to or resists heavily. Um, it does have Water Absorb, so it does mean that actually uh, any water moves being thrown at Volcarona, not Volcarona, Iron Moth, uh, I'm going to be absorbed, and that's going to really help the longevity of my Gastrodon. Um, and it's just got that bulk where you can kind of run it physical or special, kind of similar to Corviknight. So actually, I think that core where it could be physical one week, special the next week, and Corviknight be the same. It makes it harder to build for this core. Um, there is obviously potential lack of fighting weakness developing in these four so far, because obviously the flying type in Corviknight doesn't. Uh, it means it's neutral to fighting. Um, that could be one issue with it so far, but I think generally on paper against most drafts where You know most things only have like one of each type maybe two of each type that combination there is really hard to break down um, And it gives me a reliable stealth rock slash spiker I don't have to bring both I can bring both if I wanted to but you know slap recover on it and immunity two immunities water and electric um, You know it's not got horrible special offense and it does get good moves it does obviously have like Ice Beam, Sludge Wave, Earth Power, Surf, I think it might get Hydro Pump, don't quote me on that. Uh, Clear Smog is really useful as well, um, obviously for any setup mons. So it's just a good utility mon. Whether it's worth being around full pick, questionable, but I felt at the time it was something that fit my team and I didn't really have a plan. Most people seem to be going for like really strong dragons or just picking the most expensive things left in the draft because uh, they just want to try all the broken good things in one team. So there was me getting my lower sort of tier pick earlier on, so I couldn't really get sniped of it. I did obviously consider Swampert at this point as well, because uh, they share the same typing. Um, and they both get self rocks. I'm imagining Swampert gets spikes as well, I don't actually know. But 
Um, I've used Gastron before. I think the bulk's better on it. It doesn't hit quite as hard as Swampert, but that core is really nice. Um, so after this, my main issue with what I've got now is, again, still ground typings. Um, and also, outside of Gastrodon, water kind of really screws me over. So, I do have to consider Terra Captains as well. So I haven't explained. There's 20, I think it's 28 points you get to spend on Terramons. Now, a lot of the higher tier Pokemon are banned from being Terra Captains. Um, and you have to have a minimum of two Terra Captains in your draft. So that obviously then affects how you, what you get in your draft. Um, so I ended up getting one of the highest tiered Terramons next. And something that I've been told has fallen off a lot in this generation. But when I then said, oh, hang on, I can terror, I can make it a terror captain. Actually, that kind of went, oh, actually, you know what? That's going to be really good. And that is Shaman. So we've gone for the grass. So the terror rules are you have to have one type that matches your stab typing. So if it's a dual type, you can pick. If it's a solo type like Shaman, you have to have grass. And then you can pick two other terror types. Um, so from my budget, I think Shaman was like 20 points out of my 28, something like that. Um, I feel like having one of the base 100 mythicals with three potential typings and obviously with Terra Blast coverage for each of those typings or like if I if an opponent is weak to grass one week like Seed Flare with a grass Terra is going to absolutely decimate people with that really high chance of a special defense drop as well. Stab Earth Power for ground. Um, I think Shaman's going to look really good and I think it was probably slept on by a few people. I did consider Rillaboom in this uh, in this part of the draft, but I think it then got sniped from me anyway, um, because obviously the grassy terrain would be really nice uh, for the Volcarona, but then it is also quite counterintuitive with Gastrodon. Saying that, though, Gastrodon will probably die to an absorb from a level one oddish anyway, so grassy ter terrain probably wouldn't matter too much there. Um, again, some reliable recovery and synthesis. Um, it does get Healing Wish, which is really nice, so if I want to go for like a late game sweep or if my plan doesn't quite go to plan uh, and something that I wanted to kind of like clean up with is too weak, I have that healing wish opportunity where I can just sacrifice Shaman and then bring something back to life, full health and get the sweep or, you know, some more breaking going. And as you'll see in the draft, I think already I've got quite a few good Pokemon here in uh, Shifu and Volcar, uh, not Volcarona, Iron Moth that can break. Um, but what Shaman also gives me is versatility. It can be bulky, it can be uh, fast bulky, super bulky, it can be offensive, it can be physical, it can be special. Um, so yeah, while I think Shaman probably has dropped off from its former glory maybe a few generations ago where it would have been really decent, I think it it synergizes really well with the Iron Moth that I've got here. Um, Bug isn't really an issue to my team with the Iron Moth and the Corviknight there. Um, fire is a bit of an issue but not too much again with Moth and with Gastrodon so I think I cover uh, the stuff really well like flying is still an issue I have Corviknight for that but that's it so far so I've got to say again Gastrodon I called it Fidel Gastro again because that was my nickname I came up with years ago for it uh, and we have Shaman there who is called Hedgy very creatively called Hedgy um, so that's Shaman as my first terror captain uh, next up was actually not Cleavor. Originally it was Azelf, but you will see later on that I decided to swap Azelf for Cleavor because of what happened on my next pick, because I was unfortunately sniped with my next pick. So Cleavor gives me a few things. It gives me semi-reliable Stealth Rocks, um, because we all know that Stonax loves to miss. Um, it's Rock and Bug, probably two of the worst typings that you could pick for a Pokemon. However, this thing makes it work. It gets base 135 attack, sharpness, stone axe, and exism. Just, it, they hurt most things. If you resist it, you still hurt. Um, it's nuts. Stone axe gives you stealth rocks, so someone has to take damage while you put stealth rocks up as well. It does get little, but the coverage it needs, so it gets trailblaze for water types or ground types. It gets dual wing beat, um, not the best flying move, but it gets a flying move. More importantly, it gets close combat. Uh, it gets U-turn, obviously, as a bug. Um, that's really nice for stab U-turn for momentum. is great for damage and for momentum. Uh, it gets priority quick attack. <laughs> um, and I found out, actually, after drafting, it gets defog. 
It seems really counterintuitive because you're going to be running Stone Axe, so I probably won't bring Defog Cleavor, but it's another option that I have. Um, I think from building so far, it's easy to kind of just whack a scarf on this thing. Um, and you don't really have to think too much about it because if your opponent's got something which is going to, you know, be a good check against it, you click U-turn or you just click Stone Axe and set rocks up. Um, even like Stab Exorcism with Sharpness does a ridiculous amount of damage. So I'm actually really excited to use this thing. I spoke to Shroom Raver about it when I was considering picking it up in the free agency window. And he was a huge advocate of it. So uh, here I am with Cleavor. Cleavor is called Brian because it reminded my fiance of an old man. And apparently Brian is an old man name, which it is because that's my granddad's name. But that's why she went with Cleavor, uh, Brian. So what would have been as elf? Uh, was as elf uh, soon changed in the grace period after the draft because I wanted a fairy and I was going to go for Florges that was taken and then I was like not to worry I'll go for Sylveon and then that was taken so I was like well sugar like the choice of fairies were yeah, really low BST rubbish fairies or there were very few left like of actual I say good like actually good ones and I think the two choices I had at this point were either Whimsy Cop or what I ended up going for, which was Gardevoir. And then, that's why I eventually decided to drop Azelf. I was a bit worried, because Azelf was only my only knockoff user at this point that I drafted, but then I realised Gardevoir got knockoff, which was really nice. Um, so, and as I sort of like replaced the physical offence with Cleavor, I kind of felt that Gardevoir was a nice pick for replacing Azelf, and as a fairy, um, Obviously, there's two types that resist fairy. You've got your poison. Well, there's three types actually. There's fire, poison, and steel. This thing's like psychic and fairy is a combined typing, offensive typing. Incredible. I don't think there's a lot that comes into it other than steel types. Um, dark types aren't safe. You can come in on the psychic move if you want, but you're risking a moon blast to the face. Um, the coverage on this thing is nuts. Obviously, it gets like focus blast, mystical fire, thunderbolt. You can run Calm Mine, you can run Choice Scarf, you can run Specs, it gets Trace, which is incredible because, spoilers, there's a lot of weather in the league this season, so tracing like a Swift Swim or a Chlorophyll or something like that, or a Slush Rush, could be Clutch. Um, also has Synchronize, so if I come against an opponent who is running like Toxic on a lot of things, for example, I can Synchronize the Toxics back. Um, it has Healing Wish again, so I've actually got two Healing Wish users here, and it's just a normal Wish user as well. Not the best wish user, I don't think, but it is a wish user, so it has got some kind of sort of recovery there. Um, I haven't. I think I have used Gardevoir in draft before, but that was like Gen Six, Gen Seven. So obviously, it's got a lot of new toys. Then it's just a really good mod, like 125 special attack, uh, like 110 special defense or something. So it's it's one of those mods that again, kind of like Shaming, can be flexible in what it wants to do. When we can bring it offensive, when we can bring it defensive, um, and for the best fairy around still. Uh, that wasn't too shabby at all. So, at this point you can... Oh, and Gardevoir is called Tay-Tay, because apparently it looks like Taylor Swift. That was my fiancé's reasoning behind that. Next up is a Pokemon that uh, most people shat on for the entire draft. But as you all uh, eagle-eyed viewers will see, um, I don't have a dragon on my team. Um... I ended up going for like the highest price to dragon that was left at this point. Um, I think round two initially, if I wasn't going to get Iron Moth, I wanted to get something like, or like Moth Latias or something like that. Um, but that wasn't going to happen because Latias, I think Latias went quite quick. Um, so I actually ended up getting Curem, just bog standard Curem. Um, I've played one game of the season at this point, and I'm, I'm about to play week two. Calking and like building this thing is incredibly fun. Um, Ice is obviously a notoriously bad typing. It's gotten better with like Snowscape uh, buffing its defense and stuff like that. But Kieran's stats are incredible. So you've got base 125 HP, 130 in both attack and special attack. And it's got 95 speed and 90 in both defenses. So Dragon, great defensive typing. Ice, not so much. 
But the natural bulk on this thing means it can live those hits, like the rogue focus blast, the rogue iron head, the rogue close combat and stuff from things, uh, and just revenge kill. A Draco Meteor from this thing is gonna hurt, like, anything that isn't a fairy, basically. And even steel types aren't safe because I do have earth power, and I've taken, like, one of the few steel types that are immune to ground, so... This thing's looking incredible. Yes, it lost Toxic. Yes, it lost Roost. Roost is one of the worst things that it lost ever. But it does get DD. It does get Scale Shot. It does get Icicle Spear. And Gen 9, in, you know, introduced the wonderful item that is the Loaded Dice. So something that Backscalibur does, Kyurem could also do possibly better. Because it's just that much bulkier than Backscalibur. Um, obviously, it has access to Freeze Dry as well. So it's something that can, as a dragon, maybe it doesn't have as much coverage, like it doesn't have Thunderbolt, doesn't have Flamethrower, like other dragons probably would, but it does get Freeze Dry, which can hit those water types. Um, and it does also get other rogue coverage, like Iron Head, Stone Edge, Shadow Claw, Shadow Ball. Um, it gets Weather Ball as well, which is uh, interesting to see. Uh, body Press, if I need to bring like a defensive set for whatever reason. Uh, it does get Angel Power, like this thing is going to be so fun. I think before it was probably seen more as like a stall mon, but I think now it's just going to be like a brute force uh, thing. And obviously Kyurem also partners up with Gastrodon fairly well. It'll take on those those grass types, and actually my whole draft has got a lot of things to take on grass types, uh, which protect Gastrodon really well. You've got Kyurem, you've got Cleavor, you've got Iron Moth, and you've got Corviknight. So pretty much anywhere you go, you're going to struggle with a grass type against this draft. Um, but yeah, this is the nickname that I'm proud of from my fiance Courtney. She decided to call this Dino Dave, and everyone else really approves of Dino Dave. So uh, I think that might be my new favourite nickname, along with Fidel Gastro for the, uh, the Gastronaut. So we're nearing the end of the draft. You have to have a minimum of 10 uh, for any of you math mathematicians out there. You can see I've only got eight things so far. I really want an electric type, and I really wanted to draft Seb Striker as a uh, Terra Captain, because it was only down as two points, so that means I could have splashed like 15 points that I had left on something really big at the end. Um, but I decided against it because, at the, and I've said, uh, Cle I learned Cleveland got Defog, but so far in my head I've only got Defog on Corv Knight. I've got two Stealth Rock users, I've got a Spike user and I've got a Toxic Spike user, so I'm thinking I don't want Defog to be my only removal, um, because then that ruins my chances like of any hazard stacking games that I plan on, on kind of doing. Um, and I need an electric type. And also my speed tiers aren't great. Um, my fastest mon is Iron Moth with 110, uh, and Shaman then at 100. And you've then got Urshifu at 97 and Kyurem at 95. Five. So, not slow, but not fast. So, I was then really caught up in two minds. Zeb Striker looks really fun this generation. It got so many buffs that kind of went under the radar. It's got Supercell Slam. It's obviously got Sap Sipper, so it's immune to grass, something that goes really well with Gastrodon. It's got Motor Drive, so immune to electric, which works really well. Yeah, it gets like Flame Charge, Trailblaze for gra like ground types. Um, what else did it get? It got some other stuff, and it was nuts. Um, but I decided in the end to go for my boy Reggie, which is the nickname my fiance gave Reggie Alecki. Um, reason being, <laughs> 200 base speed uh, is nuts. And if your opponent doesn't have a ground type, then this thing is pretty free. Um, I will say, looking at the teams that I've built so far, uh, it's interesting to build with because obviously it's move forward is fairly limited um, but it did get supercell slam in gen 9 which means you're actually kind of viably able to run physical sets on this thing now because it does get some coverage <laughs> it gets acrobatics which is quite cool and it gets extreme speed which uh, is some priority that I kind of needed because I think outside of sucker punch on a shifu Sucker, no, Quick Attack on Cleavor, and I think Shadow Sneak on Gardevoir. I was kind of lacking, and out of those, I'm only realistically going to bring Sucker Punch. Um, so Reggie Lecky gives me some extreme speed there. I mentioned there's a lot of weather in this, uh, in, in this league, so extreme speed, it could be quite nice, or like just naturally outspeeding everything under the sun and rain might be really nice there. Um, 
But yeah, if they haven't got an electric resist or immunity, this thing is gonna hurt. And I think I've got a lot of things that like deal with ground types quite well. I've got Corviknight, which is obviously immune. I've got Gastrodon, which is super effective. I've got Shane, which is super effective. And probably most importantly, I've got Kyurem, which is super effective with ice moves. Uh, I think many ground types would probably struggle to switch into that. So. In my head, I'm thinking Regieleki could be a cool mod to try out. It, again, it's something new that I've never used before. Oh, and more importantly, I guess Rapid Spin. Um, it's a fast spinner, so if I need that clutch spin of like some Toxic Spikes or Spikes and Rocks because I've lost my boots or not running boots on like Curem or Cleavor or Moth, then that's something that I've got there as like a clutch factor as well. So I went for Regieleki. Really sad that I couldn't try Zip Strike for this season, and actually someone else did draft it as a Terra Captain, so... I really cannot wait to see how it does for them. So I do need one Mon, and I think I had... I don't think I had a lot of points left after taking up Regilecki, because Regilecki was like 8 or 9 points compared to the 2 that um, Zip Striker was. So I did then decide to pick up a normal type, because if you look at my draft, I have nothing for a ghost other than uh, Shifu. And spoilers, both Gengar and Spectria and Goldengo, all three of those were all drafted, so I was like, shit, I really need something for this. Um, so I elected to go for literally the god itself, uh, Green. And Green was my final Terra Captain too. So normal, because he's a normal type, Fairy, because Fairy is just a really good typing. Um, and it's also, that means I don't have to rely on Gardevoir as the Fairy. And I've also got Ghost, because I don't have a Ghost type. Um, and Ghost is obviously really good for matchups where opponents have really good fighting types. Um, I do have some things here that are obviously good against fighting. I've got Moth, I've got Gardevoir. That's about it, actually. Oh, and Corviknight, kind of. So, fighting is something that was a big issue for this team. So, a Ghost-type Terror on Greedon kind of made sense. Uh, I spoke to Jack about it. He was like, yep, you know what? I give you permission to take Greedon and not let me have it. So, uh, this thing is really bulky. Uh, and kind of out of the lower tier picks, this was something that I could afford as a Terror Captain. And was a ghost resist and actually has good stats outside of speed i was pleasantly surprised at how good this thing's stats are it's got like 120 hp or something and then like 90 in both defenses so it's incredibly bulky it doesn't have that reliable recovery but it does have cheap pouch so that kind of gives you something um so yeah i'm really interested to see how green works out people have kind of said actually not it's a real sleep pick because it does get cursed um, it can do a lot of damage as a, like a Terramon. It gets Swords Dance. Like, it's so bulky, the speed is almost irrelevant. Um, so yeah, Greedon, I guarantee you will come at some point, and I am very much looking forward to the day where I bring Greedon. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the draft. Obviously, like I said, it wasn't my original draft. They had Azelf in for Cleavor, but I did make that swap. And this is the team that I have had uh, since. I haven't made any more changes. There are a lot of drafts where... Um, people have after week one and week two decided to just kind of like nope i'm going to drop my whole draft i'm going to draft the whole new entire thing so there's been some wild transactions so far in the uh, the transfer market um but i'm quite happy with how things are at the moment i haven't decided to change anything yet i think i have one point left to spend so i could pick up some random one pointer um so if that happens i will obviously say in one of my videos but that's my draft well, this is my draft, and this is my very, I say brief analysis, but it's been 33 minutes, so that's not brief at all. I applaud anyone that's actually made it to the end here, and as you can probably tell, I'm really nasally, and I've got a really sore throat, so this really hasn't done me any favours. But, um, yeah, that's the team, that's the draft. Um, thank you for putting up with me for this long. Hopefully, uh, you all enjoy the draft, and you enjoy the season. Uh, week 1's game will be up next Saturday, so obviously this is up today on the 13th. Week 1 will be on the 20th, and then obviously each game will be uploaded on the Saturday following that. The regular season is 8 games, I know my whole schedule. Um, week 1, I am playing Dr. Slacking, um, and the Whimsy... Hang on, the Cotswold Whimsicots. So if you're aware of Matt, make sure you go subscribe to his channel if you aren't already to see his side of the battle when that comes out but we have already played that and week two i'm due to play in the next few days uh, against alex and the solly hull scarberries i believe it's the team they need to come for now back in my day it was the birmingham spritzy so um yeah i'm rambling so i'll leave the video there let me know what you think of the draft below but thanks for watching guys and i will see you for week one next week bye